In this video, we'll look at our final part of the energy of a molecule that we can figure out the partition function for, which is the rotational partition function, Q rot. And of course, to do this, we need to know what are the rotational energies? What are the energy levels? Uh, again, this is specific to a diatomic. For, for a polyatomic, uh, the, the equations are going to be different for this. Um, but the rotational energy is given by this equation, B times J times J plus 1 where j is our rotational quantum number. And the values of j can go from 0 and increase by integers up to you know whatever arbitrary value. And one other thing to know for the rotational energy is that unlike the vibrational energy, this does have a degeneracy. So the degeneracy depends on j and is given by 2j plus 1. Uh, so we need to take that into account when we're calculating the partition function. What is this B value? This is what's known as the rotational constant. And it has, uh, the this is a bunch of units collected together. B is equal to h bar squared over 2i. Uh, h bar is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. Uh, and i is the moment of inertia. Uh, the moment of inertia is, roughly speaking, uh, a measure of how difficult it is to rotate an object, uh, you know, how, how heavy it is, rotationally speaking. For a diatomic molecule, this has a fairly straightforward formula, which is the reduced mass, which same reduced mass that we have from the vibrational energies, times the bond length squared. R is the bond length. Sorry, that's uh, defining lots of variables here. Okay, but the, the point is we have an expression that describes the rotational energies, and we can go ahead and say that Q rotational is equal to the sum over all those different energy levels, J equals zero up to infinity times our degeneracy, so I'll just explicitly put that in here, 2J plus one, times E to the minus beta times B times J times J plus one. And that's it, that is our rotational partition function. Now, depending on the conditions and the molecule we're looking at, sometimes we need to evaluate the sum directly. Um, so in the lab on HCL that you have done or will do, um, that is what, that's the approach that we take there. We actually calculate the uh, rotational energy levels and we add them up. We, we calculate these Boltzmann factors with the degeneracies and add it up and you can find the partition function that way. That's necessary um, depending on the molecule. But for many molecules, uh, or even I'd say most molecules, um, we we can define we can uh, define a rotational temperature. This applies whether or not uh, this applies to all molecules. That is equal to H times B divided by KB. The reason for doing this 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 gives us something similar to what we saw for our vibrational temperature. It's a collection of constants that has units of Kelvin, so we'll get something in terms of T. And that gives us a slightly different version of this Q rot is equal to the sum from j equals 0 to infinity of 2j, draw that nicer, 2j plus 1 e to the minus theta rot times j times j plus 1 over t. So it collects all those constants except for temperature and the uh, quantum number into its own constant. Uh, and what matters here is this rotational temperature, or another way of putting this is the, the, the energies, the, the spacing between the energy levels. Um, you know, what is the, the, what's the comparison between the rotational energy levels versus KBT? Now, if the rotational energy levels are quite small compared to KBT, then we can take the same approach we used for the translational partition function and approximate the sum as an integral and say that, oh, we can just use a continuous function of j instead of you know, calling j, a, a, you know, having to think about each individual energy level. Um, and uh, we can go ahead and solve this that way. Uh, another way of thinking, another way of saying approximately the same thing is comparing the rotational temperature versus the actual temperature, because that's also in the exponential term here. So if the rotational temperature is much, much less than T, 
that's the same thing as saying that the rotational energies are much, much less than kBT, um, then we can do this approximation from sum to integral at, at room temperatures. You know, so for a so room temperature, this works pretty well. Okay, so um, under those conditions, we can define this as an integral from 0 to infinity of 2j plus 1 e to the minus theta root times j times j plus 1 over t dj. Okay, so then we just need to solve this integral. Uh, and let's let x equal j times j plus 1. Then dx is equal to 2j plus 1 times dj. Uh, and this just comes from taking the differential of j times j plus 1, right? That's j squared plus j, so you get 2j plus 1. So then we get uh, our integral becomes integral from 0 to infinity. We have our 2j plus 1 times dj, so that's dx, e to the minus theta root x over t. times dx, right, because these two become dx. All right, and so this integral is a known integral, the integral of an exponential raised to a constant times x. Um, you can look this up, but the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus kx is equal to 1 over k. And so this integral ends up having a pretty simple solution for q root. q root is just equal to the constant here. So it's equal to t over theta root. Or we can you know, like write those out as kBt over hB, depending on which way you want to use this. OK, and so that is our expression for the rotational partition function.